Welcome to our online sermon for St. Mary's on this 14th of April. Whoever you are and wherever you're from, you are most welcome here. My name's Phil. I'm part of the ministry team here at St. Mary's. And this Easter, we are following John's Gospel, looking at the resurrection appearances to the disciples in the days following Jesus' resurrection. And this morning, our reading begins in John chapter 21. John Chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, 
Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples didn't realise it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, have you know of any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net out on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. And they did. They were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he'd taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you've just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So our reading begins with Simon Peter seemingly not knowing what to do. They've had this amazing encounter with Jesus, the empty tomb, Mary Magdalene's testimony. He's appeared to the disciples, to, to Thomas. Simon Peter's seen all this. And yet on this morning, he decides to round up seven of the other disciples and to go fishing. It's curious, isn't it? I wonder why that was. I wonder if it was confusion or uncertainty and simply returning to what he knew, something solid and secure. Or I wonder whether or not it was simply that even after such an amazing spiritual encounter with Christ, the everyday life had a way of washing back in, as it does for us also. Whatever the reason, Jesus knew exactly where to find Simon Peter. And he was going to turn a fruitless night's fishing into an abundant catch of fish, an abundance that would reflect other abundances in John's gospel, like like the feeding of the 5,000 or the water into wine, maybe even the parable itself of the great catch of fish. All of these resurrection appearances, these eyewitness accounts, they are more than just merely observing that Jesus is risen. In every single one of them, there is learning and growth and an increase in the disciples' understanding of what's happened and who Jesus is and what it means for the future. If hearing this story in John's Gospel about the miraculous catch of fish makes you think that you've heard this before, you'd be right. It would appear that this is something of a spiral curriculum for the disciples. In Luke's Gospel, we read a pretty similar account at the calling of the first disciples. When Simon Peter first encountered Jesus, he'd been fishing all night, hadn't caught a thing, and here's this man stood on the shore, telling him to cast his nets out on the other side. Luke chapter 5 When he'd finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they'd done so, they caught such a large number of fish that the nets began to break. So they signalled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Just as on that first occasion, Jesus now stands on the shoreline. The disciples have been out fishing all night and haven't caught a thing. Again, just as he did the first time, he calls out to them and asks them if they've caught anything. And they reply, no, they haven't worked out it's him yet. Throw your nets out over the other side, he says. This time, without saying, well, because you say so, they just do it. And they catch this miraculous catch of fish. 
so heavy that it's breaking the nets. Suddenly, Simon Peter realises it's Jesus. And they rush to shore to greet him. Now comes a series of requests, a series of instructions. Jesus says to them, bring some of the fish you've caught. Simon Peter climbs aboard and drags the net ashore with 153 fish in it. Jesus says to them, come and have breakfast. They come, they have breakfast. None of the disciples dare ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This time there's no dialogue. There's no interaction in words between the disciples and Jesus, just obedience to that which he is asking of them. This is all about being called to follow and being called to listen to the shepherd's voice and listen to his voice and obey him. We're going to see next week how Simon Peter's call to follow Jesus is reinstated after Simon Peter's denial. But for today, notice that Jesus calls to them and commands them and they act on his commands. Notice too how Jesus already has a fire going on the beach. He already has fish and bread. We're not told where it comes from. And he invites the disciples to add their fish into the mix. And I see here something of the partnership that we're invited into with God. We are called to be part of what God is doing, to bring our efforts and our labours to bear alongside God. But it is always in concert with what God provides. It is always in concert with God's direction and God's instruction and always in concert with his provision. We can do nothing in our own strength. Only with Christ are we able to achieve that which God intends for us. Here is Jesus then, appeared anew to his disciples, and they are continuing to learn what it means to follow. They perhaps thought they knew when he first called them what it meant, but now surely they are growing in their understanding and appreciation of what it means to follow this remarkable saviour. And so too with us, isn't it? That we also grow in our understanding of what it means to follow Christ as we listen to his voice and seek to follow him and his ways. So what does all this mean for us? Well, I guess the first thing to notice is that it doesn't matter where you are, and I don't mean just your physical location, but I mean where you are in terms of your head and your heart, whether you're full on for Christ right now, or whether you're disappointed, or whether you're uncertain, not sure what you believe, or just tired. Just as Jesus knew where Simon Peter was and the disciples were on that morning, so Jesus knows where we are. And he comes and meets us in that place. Sometimes I think we think we've got to travel to where Jesus is, whereas I think the truer thing is that Jesus meets us where we are. And then the second thing to notice is that Jesus provides for us. He had a fire going on the beach. He had bread and fish available. But he also invites us to bring what we have into the mix. He partners with us. He invites us to share with him. And he invites us to share what we have with him also. And then we find this abundance, an abundance of love, an abundance of grace, an abundance of mercy, an abundance of provision. Just as Simon Peter and the disciples find in Christ, so too do we. And lastly, I notice that discipleship and learning the way of Christ is an ongoing journey. And every encounter we have, every experience we have, every season we travel through that we attend to Christ with in the midst of it, or Christ attends to us in the midst of it, we learn more of who he is, of what he does, and of how he calls us to follow. Might we be disciples who are open to learning 
exactly that which our Lord and Saviour would give us at any given time. Might we be open to receiving him in whatever state of heart and mind we're in. And might we each discover the fullness of life that Christ offers. The abundance of his grace and mercy and love. His provision. And might we all journey into the wonderful things that Christ is calling us into. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of Jesus Christ, his life and resurrection. We pray that as we seek to follow by your spirit, you would increase in us our knowledge and understanding of all that Christ has done for us and won for us. Help us to listen for his voice and in hearing it, obey it, that we might find our lives meshed with his and his with ours in all that we do. In your name we pray. Amen.